Well, let's get some more details on the whole concept of what's going on. Uh, journalist and political analyst Christoph Horstel, live in Berlin. Good to see you today. Uh, the Friends of Syria group pledged to give funding and communication equipment to the opposition. Is this, in your view, possibly a shift towards military aid for the rebels? Not at all. It's just to show how much of that already flowing military aid to the rebels is being uh, dealt with on the table. And uh, to be clear, on the so-called salaries, well, they are being paid since a long time, since the beginning. And since we have an eyewitness now, the ex-Lebanon uh, correspondent of Al Jazeera, Mr. Ali Hashem, who went away in disgust from Al Jazeera and who said in April 2010, I, uh, two, 2011, sorry, April 2011, I have personally witnessed hundreds of armed people crossing the border from Lebanon into Syria. From that, all experts know quite clearly that must have been pre-planned and pre-arranged from summer 2010. And that kills the whole story, the West and uh, some of these corrupt Arab allies, uh, including, unfortunately, Turkey, are making out of Syria. So what we can say now, the, um, so to say, neo-colonial battle of the West against Syria is in in a way stalled right now. They try it diplomatically, they try in diplomatic bickering, you know, about, about dealing with communication equipment. This is all a ridiculous show. These people, these uprisers in Syria But I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You, 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 call this, you call this a ridiculous show here, and you say that this whole plan of the insurgency and the uprising in Syria was engineered, you know, more than a year or even two years ago. But the, the curious point is, uh, this group, the, the group, the Friends of Syria, it, 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 it includes countries like like your native Germany. They're all on the same side. We had, you know, the meeting today of representatives of 60 countries. How is it that so many are all on one side of this conflict? In fact, if you look at these 60 so-called friends, Syria's government is calling them enemies of Syria, that is much closer to the truth. They are divided among, among many splits. They are not all of them, you know, very brutal hardliners. So, for example, Germany is maybe not 100% uh, on the side of Washington here, but they try, you know, not to make that rift shown too much. And uh, what we have, in fact, here is, in, in any case, trying to, you know, unite as much as possible the uh, 100 times splintered Syrian opposition as much as this group of 60. So you suggest that the whole Friends of Syria group is more like the enemies of Syria group. But if I may, uh, President Assad still has a lot of support back at home. How much does this meeting today in Istanbul and over the past few days really reflect the interests of the Syrian people as a whole? As a whole, one can say this is uh, certainly not in, in, in the interest of the Syrian people. In my latest article, I pointed out that the, the Syrian armed opposi opposition, those who right now, in, in a phase before the next, the first free election in a long time, who take up arms now, they are not more than 50, 15, 1, 5 percent of the population. And then there's another group uh, uh, under this Dr. Haytham al-Malek who wants to be president, who was several times in prison in Syria, and now it, it tries to, you know, have his life's dream fulfilled. That group is ultra-radical in the military field, and they may be representing 3, 4, 5 percent, and that is the real situation, not very good for the West right now. But let's see what happens after Obama uh, has, you know, finished his election campaign, and let's face it, this battle will be won or lost in the Western media, and Syria and its three main allies are very badly positioned to deal with this media field. They have little experience and little expertise to deal with the spinning of the Western media. That's a problem. Journalist and political analyst Christoph Horstel, thanks for coming on RT today.